Jumbo everyone, we are here for another Disney World staycation. It's about to get wild because we're at Animal Kingdom Lodge. Hey man fam, it's time for another resort stay. This time we're staying at Jumbo House. This is my favorite resort in Walt Disney World, so I'm so excited. We're gonna do a foodie tour, we're gonna check out a room, see some giraffes, and we even have a fun nighttime surprise planned. Ooh, I do love surprises. There's a lot to do, so let's get to it. Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge is a deluxe resort, which means it's a top tier Disney resort. It also is a Disney Vacation Club Villa Resort, having villas both here at Jumbo House and an entire DVC Villa section called Kadani Village. There is so much to do and see at Kadani Village alone that we're sticking to just Jumbo House for this staycation, and that means we get to come back to do another one for Kadani Village. To give you an idea of the prices for Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge, I looked at a weekday in September, which is the value season, as well as Christmas Eve, which is one of the most expensive times of year to visit Walt Disney World. For a standard room, we're looking at $610 during value season, $829 on Christmas Eve. For a Savannah View standard room, you're looking at $794 during value season and $1,095 on Christmas Eve. One of the best things about Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge is the ability to see all the different animals. They have their own savannas here with giraffes and zebras and antelopes and all kinds of birds, and it's absolutely amazing. So, so a lot of people do want to stay with that savanna view. And while there are tons of different overlooks and porches and patios and walkways outside to see all the different animals, a lot of people like to stay in that savanna room so that you can hopefully see those animals directly from where you're staying. We, however, are staying in a one bedroom villa with a savanna view. I'm so excited to see the room. This is one of the Disney Vacation Club villas and no, we're not part of Disney Vacation Club. Anybody can rent a DVC room just like any other hotel room. You can book it through Disney or you can do what we did, which is save a lot of money by teaming up with our friends at DVC Rental Store to book through them. The rack room for the room we're staying in for tonight would have been $1,496 if we had booked it on Disney, but we ended up booking it for $779, which is about half. I'm super excited to be working with DVC Rental Store. We've often recommended booking DVC through companies like theirs to save a lot of money on your hotel rooms. Plus, DVC Rental Store is owned and operated by former cast members like us. And even better, they're all former DVC cast members, so you know they know what they're talking about. We'll share more info about DVC Rental Store later and how to book with them, but for now, let's get in there. I really hope there's a giraffe. I love this lobby. It's so beautiful. It takes my breath away every time we walk in. Oh my God, it's so nice. Isn't this lobby just absolutely stunning? It's this beautiful multi-story lobby. You've got the gorgeous windows out there that lead you out to the savannah, the bridge going across, the light fixtures. And what's amazing about this hotel, like any Disney hotel, but I really feel like you see it here, is the attention to detail. All of the architecture, all of the different materials used, the colors, it just feels like you are somewhere completely different. It feels like you are on the continent of Africa. If you look around the resort, you're gonna see different details and things like the ironwork. Like here, it looks like a herd of gazelle or antelope running by over by Jico and Boma and some of the iron work, you've got uh, lion spaces out of the metal, which is amazing. Additionally, Animal Kingdom Lodge is home to the largest collection of African art outside the continent of Africa. So it's basically like a museum when you walk through here. There's all this beautiful artwork and display in the lobby. You'll see it uh, along the pathways to the different rooms. You will see it uh, as you walk down by the dining area. It's just, it's, this hotel is literally a work of art. One of my favorite things in this hotel is this medallion as you walk into the lobby. It's got the continent of Africa on it, and then it's got beautiful golden animals. So you've got a warthog, an antelope, you've got a Cape buffalo, a lion, all different animals right here. And either bring your own paper and crayons or ask at the front and you can do a really cool rub. I don't know if anyone did that when they were a little kid where you get like a leaf or whatever and you color over it and it creates a beautiful drawing. You can do that right here and they're happy to help you at the front desk. I don't see a hyena on here though, but I do know of one hyena in the resort that I'll show you in a little bit. On our way through the lobby, I couldn't help but stop at this mask. It's a, and I'm going to butcher this pronunciation, a jelly mask, which is 16 feet high, 240 pounds, and it is carried on the head of a single dancer. That's absolutely insane. And this one here, this a jelly mask here, is the first of its kind to ever leave Nigeria. This is absolutely beautiful. 
I'm also having a very difficult time wrapping my head around the fact that one person wears it. I don't know how. Do you think your neck could support 240 pounds? No. We are skipping the front desk check-in because we did online check-in so we can go directly to our room. Check-in time at Disney hotels is four o'clock. However, you can request an earlier time. It's not guaranteed, but you can do that online check-in and hope that it's ready early and ours was. One of the best things about my Disney Experience app now is you can use it to open your room. Uh, you could also use, if you had a magic band, you could use that, but if you don't wear a magic band, all you gotta do is go into the app, agree, hold this up like that. And like magic. Let's try again. <laughs> you are so good at this. Awkward. It's almost like it's our full-time job. <laughs> Awkward. Okay, and like magic. Ba -ba -da -da -ba -ba -bum. <laughs> Third time to try. We're trying to get some Wait, I think you have to be on the Wi-Fi. Okay, we lied. The app's mad. It's not working right now. So we went to the front and got physical tickets. Now here's the room reveal. Hey, that one worked. Oh. Now wait a minute. Oh my god, look at the little Simba. I can cook? Uh, yeah. Wait, Simba's here too, but that's cool, but I can cook. DVC rooms have kitchens. I had forgotten. Now, again, we are staying in a one bedroom DVC villa, so this sleeps up to five people, I think. You might sleep more. We can count. We can count. That's probably a pullout. I imagine so. So you have our living area here, couch, presumably a pullout. Let's That's check. That's a pullout? Pullout couch. I think this is a pullout too. Pullout chair and patio. I see zebras. Ooh. Double, double lock for children. <gasps> and adults who have trouble with locks. Look at That's this a porch. big patio. There's so much room for activities. Look at those zebras. This is a beautiful view. There's some uncoy cattle too. Should we join DVC? I don't really understand DVC, but. Oh, I don't either. I'm happy, I just like to, the view. I'm happy to keep renting rooms for half the price. That works, that math works. I still want a giraffe. Still no giraffe signings. I think if anybody is at the level at which we could see a giraffe, it is us. Okay, we're definitely having coffee out here. Oh, but look at the chairs. See, this is what I mean. This resort is so beautiful. The chairs, ironwork, and zebras. Mm, that's nice. Okay, as we were saying, pull out couch, pull out chair, television setup, and dining room. It has a full kitchen in this one, and there should be laundry facilities as well. Continuing down the hallway, you have the main bedroom. So yeah, sleeps five. Two in the main bed, two in the pullout, one on the pullout chair. I have to test all of those beds. Yeah, that is true. Also, there's literally African art in our room, which is amazing. Standard desk setup in the main room, the television and an armoire. Yeah, there's a hall closet as well, but you've got lots of space in here. Laundry. Yeah, laundry facilities. Which I never thought about doing laundry on vacation before I stayed at a DVC room with my family, with my nephews and like, Kids make you do a lot of laundry, I find out, but my family will never not stay in a DVC room now because of having the easy access to laundry. Along with the full-size washer and dryer, they do supply you with some laundry detergent as well as a laundry basket, and there are hangers in the closet. And an absolutely massive bathroom. <gasps> Look at that. Oh, the full lining <laughs> ensemble. You are in the tub. There's a hyena. There is a hyena. Yes. This is beautiful. It's a big tub. Rapid fire highlights of the bathroom. You've got your dual sink. You do have your H2O products right here. Uh, this is the worst thing about the room that I have found, and it is that this is a not great hair dryer. Towels, shelves, and then the facilities. Facilities. Also though, very important, especially for the ladies, full length mirror so you can see your outfit before you go to the parks. Wee. Also H2O soap. And then you've got the H2O products right here, but they are not the small bottles. They're the refillable kinds. Because our room has a kitchen, we are going to do a rapid fire kitchen tour. Now note, not all DVC rooms have a full kitchen. Some of the smaller studio rooms have more of a kitchenette, but this room has one. So we're gonna talk about it. Very, very deep sink. Molly would like for me to point out also drawings on the tiles. They are very cute. Right now. Also included, you have a sponge, some dishwashing fluid, as well as some hand dish soap. 
you have your ice bucket, reusable cups, a nice oven mitts as well, along with some dish towels below them, a full dishwasher, thank you, Vanna, a nice four eye stove top and oven here, lovely. Ooh, and you also have some pans included. Above that, you have your microwave or microwave, if you're cultured. Also, a nice coffee maker, as well as Disney's coffee included with some creamer, sugars, etc., and accoutrement, as well as reusable cups, and a toaster. Elephant. Yes, there is an elephant. We also have a full fridge and freezer. Freezer up top, along with some nice ice cube trays to make some ice. And your full fridge. Empty, sadly, but fridge nonetheless. Now let's talk cabinets. Below the sink, you have a drying rack, paper towels, some additional washing accoutrement, and a fire extinguisher because safety first. Above, some nice sets of plates, bowls, and serving trays, as well as a colander and your mugs, as well as a nice place to house your cream and sugar if you're staying here that long. Above the microwave is, as those cabinets are typically, empty. Mixing bowls, and oh, nice glassware. Also incredible matrix lean, Molly, well done. Down below, you have your pots and pans, another cooking accoutrement. In this drawer, some cutlery and serving items. And in here you have your casserole dishes, measuring cup, and a pitcher, along with a cutting board. If you ever feel like you're missing anything, there's actually a checklist right here of everything that comes with the room. So if you're not seeing something, see if it should be on the list and you can always call the front desk. But lastly, your main closet area. You've got an iron, ironing board, extra pillow and blanket right there. So as you can see, this is far from your standard hotel room. It's more like a little apartment. If you are wondering about filling up the fridge, you could either purchase groceries. There are some groceries at DVC resorts, some sundry items. You could have them delivered via Instacart or Amazon Prime Fresh or another grocery delivery service. Or of course, you can go to the grocery store if you wanted to head to Publix or Costco or Target or wherever you can do that. Personally, I'd go with grocery delivery services. They are quite used to delivering things to Disney, but that way if you wanted to have items here to make breakfast or lunch or some snacky items, etc., you can have that all here and enjoy like a resort day or some leisurely slower park days. One of the best things about staying in these rooms is that they do fit more people and there's more ways to spread out. So because of this, you may be able to get one room instead of two at another hotel and have a full kitchen, a washer dryer and save some money at the same time. I'm just obsessed with the detail in here. Like look at the back of these chairs. It's got Mufasa on there. Isn't that nice? Yeah, it is nice. I like this bench. We are on the ground level of the Animal Kingdom Lodge en route to grab our lunch from the Morrow. The Morrow is the all day quick service dining option here at Jumbo House. And it's open from very early in the morning until late in the evening. It does also offer mobile order, which is what we did to select our items. It includes standard American fare like a bacon cheddar burger and chicken strips, but also has things that have a distinct African twist like a tamarind pulled pork sandwich, South African veggie bowl, and I'm gonna butcher this pronunciation, but like a tremola spice shrimp bowl as well. Interesting fact about the name of the Mara, it's actually named after a nature preserve that has been active since 1889. In what's now North Tanzania. I love that everything in this resort is so well designed and I learn new things every time I come here. Uh, I also love in here the trees, the way they made it look like it's outside with the different low branches, like the ones that you would see the giraffe seating. I also love the light fixtures as well. I'm not, these, it looks to be representing a flower. I have to do a little more research, but that looks beautiful. One thing I love about the Mara is they've got really unique baked goods. It's very different from your kind of traditional Disney bakery case because you've got the infamous zebra domes, which are normally served at Boma for dinner, but you can get them here all day long. Um, they've got cute little, the brownie and the cookie here, the Nyla brownie is really good. It's got peanut butter buttercream on it. They've also got a zebra cupcake, a flamingo cake, which is a spice cake with coconut ganache. So they've got some really unique items here that I feel like people don't realize. You can also find a grab and go case for salads, sandwiches, and wraps that you can take with you to the pool. Or if you just want to grab something and head back to your room, you can also find some desserts here as well and some nice snacky type items for both you and for the young ones who might be in your party. And you can also find Mickey's premium ice cream bars, ice cream sandwiches, frozen lemonades, and the nice strawberry fresh fruit bar as well. Oh look, a hidden Mickey. I think that is a good hidden Mickey, but there's a very good, one of my favorite hidden Mickeys in all of Disney World's outside. I'll point it out when we go out there. Our food has arrived and we picked up quite the spread. I got the oak grilled chicken bowl with marinated chicken thighs, pilau rice, kale slaw, cucumber tomato salad, 
and Chamula sour cream. And Chamula is, at least from what we've researched, a marinade that would be found in North African cooking. So I'm very excited to try this. I went for the signature blend cheddar burger. So this is a ground beef burger with cheddar and it's got Barbary spice on it, which is an African spice blend, lettuce and tomato. I also went to the condiment bar, grabbed some pickles and onions, fries, and then I asked for a side of that Chamula sour cream so I could dip my fries into it. Maybe put it on the burger too, who knows also went ahead and grabbed a cup of the butternut squash soup. This is one of the signature food items here at Animal Kingdom Lodge. Normally you can find it at Boma for dinner, but we're not going to Boma for dinner and I wanted to enjoy it anyway. And lastly, we picked up the zebra dumps. These are a chocolate mousse baked with Amarula cream liqueur coated white chocolate, drizzled with chocolate stripes and chocolate shavings. This also can be found at Boma dinner for dessert, but as Molly mentioned, we're not going to be there. So we're going to enjoy them right now for lunch. And as if this wasn't already my favorite resort, they've got Shaky Jamaica's Joffrey's Cold Brew right here at the Mara. Mobile order it, amazing. Starting with the burger. I don't have any condiments on it yet, just trying it as is. I'm not gonna lie to you, a burger without any condiments, quite dry. Um, it's a good burger, it's nothing spectacular. Unfortunately, I don't really taste that Barbary spice coming through, it doesn't taste any different than a, a cheeseburger off the grill anywhere else, but I'm gonna add some of that Chamula sour cream on there. Mm. Okay, the burger patty itself is still a little dry, but adding that Chamula sour cream really enhanced this a lot. It added much more unique flavors than it had before. The Chamula almost reminds me of a tzatziki sauce. It's really creamy. It's got that sour cream. It's citrusy and a little bit zesty. Um, there's probably some garlic in here, parsley. And I like this quite a bit. So I would recommend, even if you're gonna get one of the more standard items to try the Tremula sour cream, just as uh, maybe a new flavor profile you haven't had before. But this burger's fine. It's not amazing. Time for some of this oak grilled chicken in the bowl. Now, I don't know how I'm going to get all of this into one bite, but we are going to give it a, give it a, the old college try. That'll do. Here's the deal. I was not expecting to be blown away by this and certainly did not knock my socks off, but for what it is from the Mara, something we mobile ordered from a quick service spot, it's pretty dang good. The chicken is not dry. You'd anticipate it to be dry from a, from a mass produced locale like this. The rice is very fluffy and lightly flavorful. It's not adding a ton to the dish, but it is lightly flavorful in the background. What is selling it for me is the kale salad and the pickled cucumbers and veggies over here on the side. That adds a brightness and a freshness to this whole dish that makes it just incredibly light for the volume of food you're getting. I would order this again. And trying some of this signature soup. Oh, it's like dessert soup, which I know sounds wild, but it's got a really nice natural sweetness to it because of the butternut squash. It's also got cinnamon and nutmeg, kind of fall flavors. It tastes like fall in a bowl. It's creamy and smooth and delicious. Boma has an amazing dinner spread, and my favorite thing there are the soups. Um, they also have a really good spicy chicken corn chowder a lot of the time. So, again, we're not going to Boma for dinner because we had to make tough choices. But the soup is excellent and something that is very unique to Animal Kingdom Lodge, so I'm glad to enjoy it while we're here. Mm, cheers. Mm. Full disclosure, until today I've never had a zebra cake. What? I know, right? Crazy. Wow. Yeah, that's incredible. I'm gonna be honest, if you are a texturally sensitive person, this might not be for you. It is a mousse, and on the exterior of a mousse, it's almost like a, um, kind of see it right there. a much lighter mochi style. It's not gonna be as dense as a mochi, but it feels like it's prior like, to being frozen. Yeah, it's a creamy white chocolate, and that's where your Amarula is. Amarula is a liqueur made in Africa. It's similar to like Bailey's. A lot of people put it in coffee. You actually can get it in coffee at certain places here, which I will be doing later. Um, and I love Amarula. It's kind of a black licorice thing, not in flavor, but in a you love it or hate it kind of thing. I'm a big fan of it, so I really like zebra domes, but Very like Alan good. said, not everybody does. Mostly it tastes like chocolate mousse though. I yeah. to describe it. Chocolate mousse with a little bit of light, I would imagine sort of almost like a nutmeg is the best flavor profile I can give it to you. Uh, very good though, very, very good. Food acquired and consumed, and now we shall take a quick lap with our coffee. Right here you have the largest pool at Animal Kingdom Lodge. This is the Uzima Springs pool. 
it looks like we're having some tie-dye poolside activities today. There are various activities that happen poolside here and at all of the resorts. Some of those are up charges and some of those are not in there included with your resort stay. And here is Molly trying to avoid filming anybody else while we're at the pool. I'm moving Good quickly. Move. If you move quick like a cheetah. Nice, like a cheetah. I've said it before and I'll say it again. People often ask what the worst part of this job is and it's attempting to show what pools, hot tubs, playgrounds look like and not be the world's creepiest people. So. What I can tell you is it is a zero entry pool and it has a water slide. Taking a look at the Uzima Springs pool bar menu, thank you, Vanna, you do have a lot of your classic Disney poolside beverages. You've got the Captain's Mai Tai, a banana cabana. You've also got some frozen things like the Pina Colava, which is a Miami Vice, which is half strawberry daiquiri, half uh, pina colada put together. That's a fan favorite. You also have a couple specialty cocktails. These are special to Animal Kingdom Lodge. You're going to see things like that Safari Mudslide, which has that Amarula cream liqueur in it, as well as the Snow Leopard Vodka, which donates a portion of its proceeds to save wild snow leopards, so we love that. You've got a specialty margarita, a couple other things there as well. List of some non-alcoholic specialties, including some smoothies, and on the back here we've got wine and beer. They've also just got standard liquor, and it's a full bar, so you can get pretty much anything you want. But Alan and I, well, we're doing something special. You already know I love the Joffrey Shaky Jamaican Cold Brew, and I've already mentioned that I love Al Marula Cream Liqueur. They're gonna get married right now. It's gonna be beautiful. I am the minister stress right now. I'm actually ordained. I could perform your wedding if you wanted me to. So is Alan. Anyway, cheers. Ooh. I didn't think the shaky Jamaican could get even better, but it is. Coffee's in hand. We're making our way to one of the mini animal overlooks, starting with our friends, the chatty flamingos. <laughs> Hi guys. Hello. This one's not so bright. Friend, that is a sprinkler. Oh, oh. And your other friend's trying to tell you that. He's like, bro, you're embarrassing us. You're making us look stupid. We're gonna be on YouTube. Did you know that a group of flamingos is called a flamboyance? I did. Yeah. You've also been on Kilimanjaro Safari. True. <laughs> did you know a group of Karens is called a complaint? We made that up on our podcast. We sure did. Also, did you know that flamingos are not actually pink at birth? They are pink because they eat so much shrimp, which has a lot of beta carotene in it. I'll just take your word for it. I learned that on the safari too. Hello, sir. You know, I'm not a huge fan of certain birds, but I do like the flamingo. Hi. Hello, friend. You are very handsome. And very close. They're so pretty and pink. I think I like them because they're pink. Like I'm not alarmed by them because they're pink. Like they can't hurt me. Are you watching this guy drink right now? The upside down bill in order to get the water into the, oh wow. Do you think that they, that water comes out of the, like, do you think that's why they all are messing with the sprinklers? Do you think they want the water to come out? I would imagine so. All bow to your leader. I have stood on my foot for very long. They could school you though. <laughs> They're funny. Headed out to one of the larger enclosures, passing the hot tub location, or as Molly likes to call it, ugh, people soup. Yep. We also passed some cornhole ping pong tables. There's an arcade as well. So there's lots to do in the pool area. But when I'm at Animal Kingdom Lodge, I'm looking for animals. As one would. I don't see any right now. Oh wait, I do. There's some kind of antelope gazelle or something over over yonder if you look really really hard you can finally see a giraffe it's way in the back so i hope we get to see him closer later but oh, yeah i am content seeing the giraffes also some zebras zebras springbok impalas by chevrolet yeah <laughs> one thing that's good to note is that if you look right here they have these around the resort in the lobby as well, but at the Animal Overlooks, there's a QR code and you can scan that and it'll pull an animal spotting guide with a bunch of the different animals you can see at the resort. We've made our way out to the main overlook. This is the one off of the lobby. But before we go look for animals, I wanna point out my favorite hid Mickey. If you look at these beautiful metal vined stairs, about two thirds of the way up, there is a metal Mickey. It's as if he's profile looking to the right. Yes, that is the right. <laughs> well, which way would he be looking? He's like this. So you he's know, looking to the left. From his vantage point, he's looking to the left. From yeah. ours, he's looking to the right. Correct. 
Anyway, can you see it? It's a really good one. I can see it. It's very nice. There's a giraffe so close. Why are you whispering? Because I don't want to scare the giraffe. From this distance? Yes. They have very good ears, probably. Well, would you look at that? He's getting a snack hung up in the tree. In what is one of the rare times that I can actually do this for animals and not influencers? We have a giraffe eating some delightful leaves from a tree, hung as if to tip the animal to approach so that we might observe. Ever curious, he continues to look around, taking in the space around him. Did Will's you know that a giraffe makes a low bleating sound like a sheep? What? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. I, thank you for sharing that fact, Alan. That was definitely you. Those sound the same, almost certainly. And here, yeah, arriving a new person onto the scene, attracted by the sound of a luxurious meal, a second giraffe has joined walking directly towards the Walt Disney World cast member, because I believe they understand they have the food. Amazing. There's two. They're so pretty. Okay, I'm gonna move out of the way so other people can see. All right, well, that was awesome. That is probably the closest I've ever seen a giraffe here at Animal Kingdom Lodge, so seems like around 5 p.m. is a good time to come out here. It's also a little bit cooler today, which I think the animals enjoy. Also, I think that's probably part of the regular feeding time, seeing as they tucked all of the nice leafy bits away in that time period. Yeah, so if you're staying here, you're visiting here, early evening may be a good time for you to come check for some animals. We, however, are gonna check out the gift shop quickly and then time to go get ready for dinner. We're gonna do some drinks and appetizers at one spot and then I'm super excited about dinner. I'm gonna pop into the Sawadi Marketplace where they actually have an artisan here making things. Did you make all of these? Some of them, yeah. Oh some my God, them, yeah. they're so cool. What are you making now? It's our walking cane. That's With awesome. A and a <laughs> That's amazing. Where'd you learn to do that? Uh, grandfather. That's so cool. In Kenya, that's amazing. Wow. And this is an example of some of the wood carving that is done and completed by those artisans. And it's honestly just incredible, the craftsmanship. Oh, look, a hammerhead shirt. <gasps> amazing. The, this is a bigger one. The artist just told us that everybody that does this carving here at the resort, at Animal Kingdom and at Epcot, they're all family, which is amazing. And he said that he learned how to do this from his grandfather and father, so. You could buy these statues that were carved by a real African artist. How much is the shark? $25.99. That's not bad. You want a shark? I, I wish he was a great white. Oh, don't drop the giraffe, Alan. All the They're little so giraffes are $15.99. Delicate. I think I should get one for my office, which I'm currently making them as Molly Place on Earth TM. I like to get a little knickknack or souvenir. What did, What is merchandise called? Tangible it? memories. Tangible memories. Is that what, what I a, told you to say? Yes, it is. What just a crazy way. What a genius way. What, what a Disney way to that do is, that. <laughs> like we're not selling merchandise. You don't need this bear because it's a bear. You need it because it's a tangible memory. Well, I would like a tangible memory that is a giraffe because I did ask the artist if he's ever done a hyena and he said no. So, I'm But he gonna... also said they're very popular in Kenya. Yeah, but I know there's not one here for me to choose, so I will choose a giraffe in honor of the cute giraffe we just saw outside. I think this is a pretty good one. Now, as granted, this isn't carved, but like... Are those giraffes in love? I don't know. That's cute. Throughout the rest of the story, you're gonna see some pretty standard theme park merchandise, like apparel, ears, plushes, toys, etc. but you're gonna see a lot of emphasis on animal-themed films. So there's like a lot of Lion King going on. I'm seeing some Up, some Zootopia. And you can also pick up some very specific Animal Kingdom Lodge wear as well, and a Tervis. Now, we have a ton of Tervises, but I actually think that one should probably make an exit with us. It's definitely going to. I also really like the hat, but I'm resisting. I'm not. And then again, because this has DVC villas specifically, you're gonna find a larger than normal selection of sundries, as well as a small selection of toiletries, over-the-counter medicines, in case you forgot anything. Are you buying Pop-Tarts? We have a toaster, it's absolutely. True. We have time to luxuriate. We, We're basically retirees right now. That's what I'm saying. Purchases made. Because we're adults. 
You know when you go into a Disney gift shop and just don't have any self-control? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm glad you got that hat, though, because I've been working on my Disney World wardrobe for years at this point, so. Yeah, I'm a little bit late to the game. Yeah. So I feel like I have to, I feel like I have to pump up my numbers. I, I hear you. We are headed back now to luxuriate a bit in our beautiful hotel room, have a cup of coffee on the patio, and then get ready for our two-stop dinner. Hmm. Cheers. But we're going to take a moment. There's an ostrich. And look at some animals. I don't like ostriches. They're dinosaurs. They are dinosaurs. It's the feet. We're going to take a moment and rest, then change, and head down for dinner. So we will... See you soon. We yeah. did it. Yeah. Also, there's a giraffe right there. Oh. You it's both share spots. Different, but still spots. Zebras. Antelopes. We saw a lot of animals. Evening time seems to be the best time to see the animals, especially because it's a little bit cooler. They're hungry. I love them so much. You know who else is hungry? Me. Food time. Yeah. No, but really, we do have to go get some food. Look at that giraffe. It's a very, very majestic animal. It really is. It's my third favorite safari animal. Oh. Mm -hmm. What's number one? Hyena. What's number two? Lion. What's number four? Elephant. Nice. Yeah. What's your favorite safari animal? Number one, lion. Mm, good choice. Number two, elephant. Great choice. Number three, giraffe. Four, rhino. Mm. Five. Leopard. Jinx, you chose to not take the elevator here so that you might see this absolutely stunning bridge, which takes us to the chandeliers that we saw earlier, and Molly mentioned were incredibly intricate. These are actually shields and spears that wrap across the lights above. This lobby is absolutely incredible. It's so gorgeous. It's this is why this is my favorite resort. Obviously, I love the safari animals. That's a huge perk, but just it's a work of art being there. Our first stop on our eating trip tonight is Victoria Falls Lounge, which is located between the main lobby level and the level with Boma and Jico. Here you've got a very nice cocktail list, including several drinks made with African liqueurs and liquors, as well as a nice wine list. South Africa is actually the eighth largest wine producer in the world, which I feel like a lot of people don't realize. We're going to get some wine in a bit, though, so stay tuned. You've also got a lounge fare menu with a couple of light bites as well as a burger, so we're going to grab a, one of my favorite things in Disney World. Our beverages have arrived. I picked up the Flame Lily here, which uh, is one of the first drinks I've ever ordered with a glow cube. And truth be told, I had no idea it had one in it because I just read the first ingredients and decided to order it. It was Cruxlin Gin, Campari Liqueur, Van de Hum Tangerine Liqueur, and Lemon Juice. I am very much looking forward to this. It sounds really herbaceous. And I grabbed this Savannah Rains because along with the gin and tangerine liqueur and Allen's drink, the star African rum in my drink are all made in Africa, so feels on theme. Mine also has lime juice and it's topped with ginger beer, so it's basically a mule. One thing I should note is that since you are at the Animal Kingdom Lodge and conservation is key, they don't actually give you straws. You have to ask for them specially if you would like one. Ooh, that's lovely. I like a mule. Rum is not my preferred liquor of choice. I'm more of a bourbon or tequila drinker, but it just tastes like a standard mule, pretty gingery. What I like about a ginger drink, though, is that the ginger does tend to curb some of the sweetness. You can't really taste the alcohol in this, so if you're someone that doesn't like strong drinks, this would be a good choice for you. It's fine. It's just nothing that special. So delicate. I don't know how to finagle around a floating, glowing lily. Okay. Yeah, that goes through a range of flavors, none of which is sweet, which I'm a really big fan of. Initially, you get a, um, a bitter hit from the Campari, and then it goes into the sort of more herbal notes of the gin. It's not a super spicy gin. It's very much an herbal gin, not floral. You're tasting herbs here in juniper, and it ends in its very sour with an almost citrusy aftertaste, which is the tangerine liqueur. Wow, that's, that is so complex, but it is really, really good. I am surprised, and I'm a really big fan. Sorry, a lot, of, a lot of saliva happening after the tartness. It's really good. Now, this is one of my favorite things on property. It's a whipped goat cheese dip, and it comes with a couple of varieties of crunchy crackers, some 
Papadou, and it's got like an olive tapenade on top of it. It is so good. If you like goat cheese, look at this. I love goat cheese. It's one of my favorite kinds of cheese. It's a little bit tangy, a little bit, uh, there's a little bit of sweetness in here from this tomato relish that they've added and a little saltiness as well from the olive tapenade. This is such a simple yet, I feel like underrated dish. Consistency wise, it's almost like hummus. So it's like queso and hummus had a delicious baby. If you are a goat cheese fan, I absolutely recommend it. Next up, we picked up the Cape Town Slap Chips. These are fried potatoes with arugula, apricot, sherry vinegar and blue cheese crumble on top. Uh, I don't even know where to begin here, but that big blue cheese crumble is absolutely calling my name. Would you look at that? Oh my. Oh. Oh wow. So the exterior of the potato is crispy, but the interior is incredibly fluffy. The sherry vinegar and apricot on top is this very interesting acidic and sweet counterplay. And the blue cheese adds a deep richness to the dish that it really, really needs. This is a great example of a complete dish because the arugula comes with a little bit of brightness. I, oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, we are about to head into Jico, the cooking place. It is, in my opinion, the best restaurant or one of the best restaurants at any Disney resort. It's uh, my favorite restaurant on property for sure. Incredible. Jico is a signature restaurant. That's code for fancy and expensive, even by Disney standards. It's very true. It actually has the largest selection of South African wines outside of South Africa. And it has the second largest wine selection period on property, dwarfed only by the California Grill. The menu itself here at Jico is very African inspired. So if you want to try something new, or maybe you're an adventurous eater, or want to be a little bit more adventurous in this particular dining experience, this is a great place to try it. Not only is Jico my favorite restaurant, that's largely because it has my favorite meal on property, the signature filet mignon with their mac and cheese and a red wine sauce. It is so good. I've been thinking about this meal for weeks ever since we booked oh, this day. It's so good. In fact, the mac and cheese is so good. It's been passed down from chef to chef as the head chefs have changed to Jico through the years. It was actually taken off the menu at some point, but so many people knew about it that they would request it like a secret menu thing that when Jico <laughs> reopened, they finally put it back on there. So I good. Cannot wait. But wanted to give you a heads up since it is a signature dining experience. We want to be courteous to the other patrons around us that are having more of a fancy occasion type meal. Mm -hmm. We're not going to film our reviews at the moment. We will take B-roll. We will take copious notes of what the food tastes like, and then we'll record the reviews afterwards. I'm so excited. We'll see you then. Jico means the cooking place. And while it isn't incredibly difficult to get a reservation here, which is just wild considering this restaurant is incredible and my personal favorite, if you don't want to have the full dining experience of this signature dining location, you could go to the Cape Town Lounge, which sits at the exterior of Jico itself. And while it has a great drink menu, it also offers the full menu that you could find at Jico. The restaurant is designed to look like an African sunset, which you can see in the beautiful colors on the wall. The lights are designed to look like the mythical Kanu birds flying over the savanna. Legend has it that if these birds fly over your harvest, it's going to be a prosperous year. And if you look down on the floor, you can actually see that they've got the harvest here with the bales of grains indicated here in the woodwork as well as in the wine cellar. My favorite detail, however, are the rings around the columns. They are designed to look like the traditional neck rings worn by women in several African tribes, most notably the Indabella women. What's interesting is you'll notice the columns all have different numbers of rings, and that's because in their society, the more rings you have, the more prominent stature you have in the tribe. Keep in mind that Jico is a signature restaurant and they do have a dress code. They specifically call out no swimwear, but they also ask that you dress to match the restaurant's sophisticated and upscale aesthetic. Speaking of upscale, we did start the meal with some warm rose water towels to clean the hands, as is a African tradition after a hard day to take those warm towels and clean your hands and make sure you're ready for your meal. The drink menu at Jico is both large and extensive. And if you don't want to go with wine, which why wouldn't you at this restaurant, and you wanted to go with a specialty drink, I recommend the Kanu Old Fashioned or the Seychelles Martini. But it's Jico. And it has the largest selection of South African wine outside of South Africa. So I'd recommend going with the wine. 
And that's exactly what we did. We went with the Kanankop Pinotage, which is a varietal very specific to South Africa. And if you're gonna go with anything, that's what I'd recommend. It's very similar to a Pinot Noir. It's very light bodied, but it has some nice floral and fruity notes. It's delightful. And if you're gonna pick anything off the menu, that would be my recommendation for wine. Taking a look at the Jiko menu, you start with a variety of appetizers. You've got the Jiko salad, where the produce comes from the land pavilion, which is really neat. They've got scallops, a seasonal flatbread, which is right now duck confit with honey raisin, a sweet potato soup, as well as their famous boar tenderloin. Moving into the entrees, of course, that signature dish is the oat grilled filet, but they have a variety of other proteins as well. They've got a lamb shank, sustainable fish, venison, chicken, short rib, a seafood tahini, as well as a plant-based dish. They've also got a few enhancements that you can add to any meal, including a baboti mac and cheese, an octopus salad, and an oxtail samp and beans. Every meal is going to start with the Jiko bread service. It was traditional Egyptian bread called fatir, as well as the giraffe bread, which is really cute. It's a white roll that's rolled in rice flour before baking it to give it a unique giraffe-like pattern on top, and then it's served with black sea salt butter. Honestly, the bread is really cute, but there's nothing super special about it beyond the appearance. It tasted like very good white bread, but I was more excited for the things to come. And what came next was the bride wild boar tenderloin. And if you're not getting this, I don't know what you're doing. A braai specifically describes a South African style of wood fire grill. And this boar tenderloin came with a creamy pap. For those of you who are familiar, it's a finer ground hominy style, which was incredibly rich and full of flavor that carried forward the smoked herb oil, which stole the show. It was incredible and added a nice smoky depth to the dish that was counteracted by the chocolate tomatoes that added a bit of brightness and acidity and all in all balanced out this brilliant appetizer in something that I would recommend and frankly would get every time I come back to Jiko. Next up entrees time and it's the reason for the season the oak grilled filet mignon. It is served with their four cheese macaroni whatever vegetables in season this time it was spiced brussels sprouts and their signature chocolate red wine demi glaze. Y'all this meal is so good that I build it up in my head every time and I always think it may let me down but let me tell you what it never lets me down. It is such a perfectly cooked filet mignon. It's got some herb butter on top of it. The char on the steak is perfect, so flavorful in of itself. I asked for it medium rare. It was cooked perfectly. Then you're going to pair it with this ooey, gooey, delicious macaroni and cheese. It's got those swirly noodles. It used to be different noodles, but I prefer these swirly ones. Super, super rich mac and cheese. And then you've got this red wine sauce to kind of cut through everything. This dish is amazing it is my favorite meal in all of walt disney world it held up this time if you are a steak fan you absolutely have to try this no notes and for my entree i got the botswanan seswa short rib that is slow cooked beef short rib with hominy sea peas mushrooms and carrots frankly it's difficult for me to describe how wonderful this dish was the short ribs just fell apart it required absolutely no effort on my part to pull the beef apart, and it was so deeply rich in flavor. The hominy, sea peas, mushrooms, and carrots beneath the beef served as a nice counteract to it. It was a little bit more acidic and dry when the beef was just very, very moist with the sauce over top. I cannot explain to you how beautiful this dish was and how balanced it was. It was fantastic perhaps one of my favorite meals I've had on Disney property. Okay, well, that so was just incredible. So good. Maintains the spot as my number one favorite restaurant on Disney Hands property. down. Also, there is a space where you can actually sit near the chefs cooking with the oak fire grill. Yeah. They said it's either first come, first serve, or you can request it when you're having, uh, when you're checking in for your reservation. So that's going on my Disney bucket list to sit Absolutely. there and eat with the chefs. That sounds amazing. Oh my gosh. Well, up next, we have our Starlight Safari. Eek. Yes, so we booked the Starlight Safari, which is a nighttime safari over at Kadani Village. You actually get to go out on the reserve with night vision goggles. So we got to get to that, which means we did not have time for dessert at Jico, but don't worry. We grabbed it yeah. and some more macaroni and cheese to go. But that is the beauty of having a full kitchen. We can drop this off in the room because we have a fridge, we have a microwave to heat it up later and uh, change into more um, appropriate safari clothes. Yeah. We have asked. 
Now I know I said we weren't gonna go to Kadani Village in this video, but that's where you check in for the Starlight Safari. This is an add-on experience that anyone can do. You do not have to be staying at Animal Kingdom Lodge. Without discounts, it's $89 per person, but this is a special safari that takes you out at night with night vision goggles. I'm literally so excited. Could not be more thrilled. Do you think we're gonna see a giraffe? I hope so. with her. I have the windblown hair of the Savannah. Here you go. Anyway, that was awesome. It was amazing. That was so fun. It gave me a lot of like really fun memory vibes from South Africa. So it's definitely expensive. $90 before any kind of discount is not an inexpensive amount of money for an hour. It's a pretty expensive hour, but it was awesome. <laughs> You know, and here's the deal. You'll have to decide if it's worth it for yourself. But for me, being able to see those animals that close. They were so, I could have pet the giraffe. Luna is my new favorite. She's beautiful. I've never known I've needed a favorite giraffe in my life. Gorgeous. But Luna is my and she favorite was, the, the zebras were so close. We saw the baby zebra. <gasps> Trooper. So if you're a big Animal Kingdom fan, if you're a big animal fan, zoo fan, yeah. It's a really cool and unique experience and it didn't feel short like it it felt every minute of that hour. I didn't feel like we were like in and out at all. It was I think for me well worth the time. Do you want to know that you have to be at least eight years old to go right. on the experience? So if you've got little, little ones, this is not going to be for them. They typically do it two times a night, 8, 30, and 10, but always check to see um, when you're booking. It, it does book up quick. I was able to snag a reservation about a week ago, but it is something that books up because it's very popular, so you're going to want to keep checking back or use a third-party service like Mouse Dining, which I always recommend, um, which is how I actually booked ours, not an ad. Um, They're just really good. It's just how I book a lot of things. <laughs> um, but I loved it. I thought it was awesome. Also, as always, shout out to the cast members, Emily, yeah. our driver, and Paula, our guide. They were awesome. Paula specifically, she was on the truck with us. She was awesome. Just what amazing stories. Paula worked with uh, the birds for the Macaw Show in the Animal Kingdom and now is doing this. And it's, you can tell the passion that yeah. these casts have for this job. She had lots of fun facts, which you know I appreciate, and she knew the name of every single animal, which was which impressive. Is crazy. In the dark. She's like, oh, that's that zebra, that's that yeah. giraffe. And I was yeah. like, how? Yeah. How would you know? There they are. How do you, how? Amazing. So really, really cool, especially if you are doing like a, a day at Animal Kingdom Lodge or you want a cool safari experience, right. but we don't want to spend the money or the time to do like Wild Africa Trek. This is a really, really cool thing, and I'm really glad we did it. Yeah. But now I think... Um, we have dessert waiting for us. Yes, and more macaroni and cheese. Mm. Back at Jumbo House. This lobby, it looks slightly different, but just as majestic in the evening. It's stellar. Ugh. And uh, before we go back to the room, I want to go to one of my favorite little nooks of the lobby. And it's not just because this is where the hyena is that I was mentioning earlier. There's this beautiful fireplace right here. If you've got a coffee or a glass of wine, it's a great place to sit. Right here. Here he is. Oh. She yeah. is, because hyenas are matriarchal society. The lowest ranking woman outranks the highest ranking man, and I appreciate that about hyenas. So I'm gonna assume this is a woman hyena. Anyway, here she is, hyena representation. If we hadn't done the Starlight Safari, I would have suggested we grab a nightcap and sit there by the fire, but I think the Starlight Safari was definitely worth it. I agree, and also that gives us the opportunity to head back to the room and enjoy some delightful desserts and mac and cheese. As one does. All right, here is our late night spread, because did you really go to Disney World if you don't get desserts and macaroni and cheese to eat 
in your room at 11.30 at night. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're learning that now. I'm <laughs> gonna watch some Pirates of the Caribbean in a little bit. It's getting crazy. Um, okay, for starters, this is the Boboti mac and cheese. This is an enhancement that you can add to your meal at Jiko. Uh, Boboti is a traditional African dish where they use some kind of ground meat. They often use egg and um, mushroom and other items with it. It's often like a quiche, but this is a Boboti mac and cheese. So it's got four cheeses, spiced beef, almonds, raisins, uh, kachumbari, which is like an onion and tomato slaw, and then a red wine reduction on it. So very excited about some more delicious mac and cheese. Also, this is my dessert that I picked up. This is actually not my favorite dessert from Jiko, but the one I like um, has ice cream with it. I didn't think that would um, make it from the restaurant back to the room. And of course, these are not gonna be plated as beautifully as they would be in the restaurant. But this is the Kilimanjaro. It's made with single origin Ghanaian dark chocolate mousse, uh, a pistachio financier, a pink peppercorn meringue, a cocoa nib crunch, and some pineapples on there, some kind of candied pineapples, as you can see. For my dessert, I picked up the milk tart, which is an African milk custard tart seasoned with cinnamon and cardamom accompanied with some fresh fruit. This just looks to be light and airy, along with the cardamom and cinnamon. I'm looking forward to just a refreshing palate cleanser this evening. Going straight for the mac, I see. Yeah, I'm a savory gal. It's the same basic mac and cheese that I had earlier from Jigo, but obviously it's got the beef. The beef is spiced so phenomenally. It's got spices that I would normally associate with curry. So you've got star anise, you've got coriander, you've got the paprika. It is so delicious. Jiko can do no wrong in my eyes, and this is phenomenal. If no one at your table is getting the steak and mac and cheese for dinner, which, why? Um, but if no one is, or you're just going to the lounge, get this, you will not regret it. All right, so here's my dessert. You can see the pistachio in there, the mousse, and then it's on this like cookie, cakey number, and there's some little crumbles down here. Ooh, that meringue is phenomenal. That's the best part. I really thought this would be too sweet and too rich for me, but our server recommended it when I told her my favorite one was the ice cream one. And um, it's phenomenal. It's definitely very rich. The chocolate is very rich. You can tell that it is that really high quality chocolate, but you've got this pistachio crumble and the meringue to help break it up along with the, the fruit accompaniments. It's a really nice dessert. It's definitely a traditional chocolatey dessert that you'd end your meal with at a fancy restaurant, but I love that they put the African twist on it with the other flavors. I really enjoy this. As someone that doesn't lean towards chocolate desserts, I would definitely pick the uh, milk tart ice cream dessert, which comes in a little cradle to look like a bird's nest and little shortbread cookies. That's my favorite one, so I'd recommend that one over this one. But if you are a chocolate person, this is unique enough that I think it's really fun to try. Time to try the milk tart. I'm just now realizing that is probably butchering the pronunciation, and if that is the case, I want you to know I'm genuinely sorry, but I tried. So, let's get it all in one bite, shall we? Everything together, a little bit of the crumble. Would you look at that? This is everything I wanted and more. Oh yeah. It's light, it's airy. The fruit and the crumble serves as a nice texture differentiator. You can just taste the creaminess of that milk. The cardamom and the cinnamon don't overpower anything. They sort of sit to caress the edge of that flavor profile. And the fruit has a brightness, acidity, and a freshness to it that cuts through a lot of what would rather be a really, really light dish. Yeah, I could down this in one sitting and go back for more. Oh my. Thank you all so much for coming along with this little journey on us. Sorry, I got a little choked up with my, my tart. Hmm, I understand. And the fun's not over because believe it or not, we have more eating to do. In the morning, one of the breast, breast. One of the breast. <laughs> one of the breast breakfasts at Disney World. <laughs> it's very late. One of the best <laughs> breakfasts Certainly the best breakfast Not buffet. It. You did it. At Disney World. We're headed there for in the morning. But in the meantime, we're gonna eat Jiko snacks. Jiko snacks. Yeah, and uh, we'll see you in the morning. Good night. Night.
Good morning. Good morning from the savannah. Mm. We have spent an hour out here sipping coffee and staring at animals. And it's been awesome. Yeah, it's been a really good morning. We got to see a lot of zebras. I think we saw my favorite giraffe, Luna. Luna. Also, the baby zebra was like <sighs> frolicking about. It's a little chilly today. It's in the 50s, which I know is not ideal for a park day. Or maybe it is, live your truth. Um, but because of that, the animals get like frisky and they get like the zoomies a little bit. And they're. Even the giraffes started yeah, to run. They are so gangly. It's honestly like a potato on toothpicks. <laughs> anyway, breakfast time? It's breakfast time. We'll get her there eventually. If there's any breakfast that could lure me away from looking at giraffes, it's Boma. And that's fair. Boma is delicious. It's probably the best breakfast on property. Hands down. Especially since California Girls Brunch hasn't come back. It's like this and homecoming. You can't top it. <sighs> Wait, also Wine Bar George's Brunch is pretty good though. All right, well now we're just going to add to an ever-growing list. This is the best breakfast buffet on there property. There we go. No questions asked. <laughs> it is an African-inspired buffet, so much like Chico and the other restaurants here, you are going to have classic items on the buffet, like waffles and eggs and bacon, but you're also going to have baboti and goat cheese-infused eggs and carved meats, and it's just delightful. It really does have something for everybody, which is what I think makes it, one, so appealing, and two, everything's pretty high quality as well. For breakfast, Bomo will run you $35 per adult and $21 per child, and that includes all you care to enjoy from the buffet, as well as unlimited non-specialty beverages. If you'd like to order a specialty beverage or a beverage that has alcohol, that is going to be an additional charge. They do have a boozy uh, iced coffee that comes top of the Zebra Dome that I could recommend, as well as a mimosa made with the signature jungle juice, which is that passion fruit orange guava juice, also known as hog juice at the Polynesian or Florida Sunshine over at Riviera, but it's one of Disney's signature juices. So if you are looking for an alcohol, I can recommend those. But for today, I think we're both just sticking with the coffee and the breakfast. I plan on filling up my stomach with a bunch of buffet food. Let's go. A fun fact about Boma Flavors of Africa, TM probably, is the fact that Boma actually refers to the enclosure that we are sitting in. In Africa, a Boma is something that people would make with natural barriers such as rocks or wood like you see here to be a gathering place where people could eat and not have wildlife intervene. When we went to Africa, we actually started, I know I've told this story, and I'm that person that traveled abroad as a, as a college student and then won't shut up about it. That's me. This is true. But our first night in Africa, we actually had dinner out in a boma, and it was, uh, they used rocks to keep the animals out. We sat under an Amarula tree, and we had a delicious uh, dinner, and they threw the bones to the hyenas. That is where you fell in love with hyenas famously. First of all, they're way bigger than I thought they were. Second of all, they can get down on their little knees and like nom 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 on the bones. Third, they're really cute as they chew through bone. Starting off right here at the grill section, this is exactly what we're talking about when we say it's African fusion here. You've got pap, which is kind of like grits, chakalaka, which is spicy African uh, tomato stew that you can put on the grits, some oat grilled tomatoes, and some oat grilled asparagus. At this station, we have some turkey babodi, carved ham, nice boma mustard, which is a chipotle and teriyaki mustard sauce, as well as sambal, which uh, I have to grab. Sambal is an Indian and Asian style sauce that has some chipotle peppers and sun dried tomatoes. It is spicy. It is earthy, but I'm a big fan. Next up is an oatmeal station. They've got classic oatmeal as well as coconut steel cut oats, which y'all are, if you like coconut, it's amazing. There's also a variety of toppings. I may be back for oatmeal, but I've got my eyes set on some other carbs for now. These next couple of stations are what we would consider classic breakfast fare, but with an African twist. You have pork sausage, African tots, which is tater tots with a little bit of African seasoning, West African sweet plantains, and then you get into pancakes of the normal and blueberry variety as well as your classic Mickey-shaped waffles. But it gets better because they also have Simba waffles because we're at Animal Kingdom Lodge. Ooh, that is neat. Next up we have the egg station, which has classic scrambled eggs, also my favorite scrambled eggs that I've maybe ever had. They always mix them up. Sometimes they do goat cheese and chai, but today they are scrambled with spinach, tomato, and feta. They also have little bebe omelets if you care for your own omelet. And up next is bacon, which is a classic, as well as a variety of different fruits, including a traditional fruit salad and some watermelon slices with a mint pistachio crumble. 
it's delicious. I'm intrigued. Next up, we've got some little bebe parfaits, if you'd like that, both with and without granola, as well as some charcuterie meat, some sliced cheeses, and some deviled eggs with smoked salmon and capers. And finally, you have hit the pastry section, which includes things like classic blueberry muffins and apple pockets and chocolate chip muffins, but also some more unique offerings like sticky buns, French toast bread pudding that has a pecan praline sauce. There's a vanilla sauce also. Oh. I cannot recommend either of these enough. I'm coming back for those. Those are a must at Boma Breakfast. You can also have things like cinnamon rolls and croissants and some assorted bagels with a nice toppings bar, including cream cheese, some chocolate hazelnut spreads, jams and jellies. Give us a quick tour of your plate. Got a little loud in Boma, so recapping some of the highlights here, this is truly such an incredible buffet. They do the classics so well, so of course if you get your Mickey waffle or your Simba waffle, it's going to be amazing because that malted batter, they've got scrambled eggs and sausage, which has a little bit of spice, but I want to focus on the signature items. My favorite things at Boma are those scrambled eggs with whatever flair they've added. Again, it was feta, spinach, and tomato when we went. It's so fresh. It's so delicious. There's a little salty nuttiness from the cheese. Makes you feel healthy because you're eating spinach at breakfast as well. Speaking of healthy, let's talk about the carved ham. <laughs> I think of this as just a vehicle to get that incredible, iconic Boma mustard into my mouth, which is a little bit sweet, a little bit heat. Plus, when you add that sambal to add even more heat to it, it's an incredible dish. Sweet ham with a little saltiness, five stars. Those are my two staples every time I go to Boma, but truly, everything on the buffet is delightful. I just want to take a moment and echo Molly's sentiment on that carved ham and the sambal. Oh, goodness. As a spice lover, that is amazing. But if I have to have my highlights for a Boma breakfast, I'm going to highlight the pap, which is just phenomenal, especially if it's paired with the chakalaka, which adds a nice freshness to an otherwise rich dish, as well as the turkey boboti. I know that might be a step outside of the comfort zone for a lot of folks as you go to Boma, but this is the time to try something new. And the boboti adds a little bit of the standard savoriness of a turkey or whatever meat is being served at the time, along with a little bit of nuance from the additional flavors of coriander and nutmeg. And it might sound off-putting at the face of it, but it is a truly unique dish that you're not going to get anywhere else on Disney property, and it's phenomenal. And that will always be one of my highlights. But of course, you cannot leave Boma without grabbing some of their signature desserts. And at breakfast, we're talking about house-made pecan sticky buns with a pecan praline sauce, as well as French toast bread pudding with a house-made vanilla sauce. My favorite of these is the pecan rolls. They are sticky, they are ooey, they are gooey, they are so sweet. It goes against everything I stand for when I say things are too sweet. But I think the crunch of the nut helps break up the sickly sweet glaze, which is only increased when you add the mandatory pecan praline sauce. I'm telling you, about half of these is enough to send you in for a cavity check, but they are so good and they're warm. Make sure you wait for a new pan to go out. Oh, they're fantastic. Well, first of all, I think it's important to say that that nut is pronounced pecan, but it is delicious. And the French toast bread pudding is also equally delightful. Now, the French toast bread pudding itself, before you get to the vanilla sauce, is not super sweet. It's light, it's fluffy, it's a little eggy, like you'd expect from a French toast that's been compacted into a semi-dense pudding. But once you pour that vanilla sauce over top, boy, does it get sweet. And while sweet things aren't necessarily my jam, this is pretty darn good. I might frankly recommend getting something like a syrup to pour over top because that's more traditional French toast to me. And it's still very tasty, but gosh, I just love French toast. I know people like waffles. I know people like pancakes. But French toast, unsung hero, and where it's at. Oh, Boma, every it time. So good. I'm in the Boma coma. The Boma coma. Mm -hmm. That's I didn't nice. make that up, but it does apply here. It's, Absolutely. It's so good. It's... I don't have words. I think for the variety, for the type of very unique dishes that are very uniquely African, and then you also have the classic dishes for breakfast, it's just hard not to want to eat everything. I might have done that. Boma used to be like the best kept secret of Walt Disney World, and you, you never needed a reservation, but secrets out so it's definitely harder to get a reservation than it once was definitely not impossible or as hard to get as a lot of dining locations 
However, if you're not able to get a reservation, we did the walk-up wait list this morning. It was 55 minutes when I looked at it when we were in our room, which was perfect because we had enough time to enjoy a cup of coffee on the balcony um, and then come down to Boma. But uh, if you can't get a reservation, you can try that walk-up list or keep looking back because they do open up. But it's, it's secrets out. People know how good Boma is now. Doesn't make it any less worth it, though. No. Also, don't forget when you go to a Disney sit-down restaurant, anything you get to drink that's not a specialty beverage or alcohol, you can take one to go. So I always get a to-go coffee after breakfast. So that way I have one to leisurely enjoy uh, throughout the rest of my day, which I feel like this is this is going to make a walk over to an animal overlook soon. Absolutely. And it will fuel us through the Bomacoma. That's true. Well, unfortunately, that brings our stay here at Animal Kingdom Lodge to a close. That is unfortunate. This is my favorite hotel and staying here and luxuriating and eating my way around only confirmed that. Yeah. Only confirmed that. I think there's two real downsides to staying at Animal Kingdom Lodge. Uh, one, I think the transportation is not ideal. There's yeah. only buses. This is the only deluxe resort that doesn't have any kind of boat, monorail, Skyliner, transportation to any of the parks. It's only buses and you're pretty far away from like Magic Kingdom. So it's going to take a while to get around property, uh, so the location isn't ideal. Unless you're just really jonesing to go to Animal Kingdom I am all always. the time. The, so perfect for you. Hello, it's me, hi. You're the problem? It's not a problem. The second is that there's only really one pool here. Most deluxe resorts have multiple, and at least one leisure pool that's a little bit more quiet. Now at Jumbo House, where we're staying right now, there is only the one pool option. There is a leisure pool at Kadani Village, uh, but I don't want to have to take a bus or drive or a 20 minute walk to get there. It's just not convenient, but it gives us a reason to check out Godani Village next time. Also, one thing some people ask about this resort is if it smells like a zoo. No, it doesn't. <laughs> no. I think the only time we might have mildly encountered that, that zoo smell, and I wouldn't even say it's truly a zoo smell, is when we were on the Starlight Safari, but we were actually out in the savannah yeah that's the only time i could smell that animals were nearby walking around here being around here i don't know how disney does it but it doesn't smell like a barn or animals or a zoo or anything it's just lovely and a massive thank you to our friends over at dvc rental store for mm -hmm. sponsoring this video through them anyone can book dvc rooms and potentially save a lot of money and stay at places like the riviera boardwalk and Polynesian, Wilderness Lodge. It's super easy to book with them as well. You'll go onto their website. You can search for whatever rooms you're looking for. And if there's something available, you put in that you're interested uh, and they'll take the process from there. It's super easy. I went ahead and looked at a couple of different options just to kind of give you some price points compared to Disney. Uh, May 10th through 11th, which is just a, a random day in May I picked, <laughs> uh, a two bedroom villa at Bay Lake Tower over at Contemporary, $817 at the DVC rental store, $1,891 booking it directly Ooh. through Disney. Uh, a nice weekend in June, June 17 to 18th, I looked at a one bedroom villa on the boardwalk, $888 at Disney, $741 at DVC That's rental nice. store. So not as huge of a savings, but still $140 something, that'll, that'll help you with your eating, your souvenirs, et cetera. That's a nice meal. Genie, whatever you need to spend that on. Uh, and then I also looked a random week night in September 8th through 9th, uh, Riviera, a standard studio, $760 on Disney's website, $323 at DVC no. Rental Store. Yeah, that's that's less than half. That's wild. Yeah. So booking through them, um, one question we get a lot is, is this allowed? Yes, it's allowed. It's, it's totally legal. It's just a way that people that have DVC points can rent them out to other folks if they're not going to use all of their points, which means if you are a DVC owner and you're not going to use all your points, you can actually sell through them as well um, and, and make sure those points don't go to waste. But it's super easy. It was really great to work with them. Another cool feature they have, and, and we might need to do this because it's, it's fun, is you can also just check available stays. So if people have already booked stays at Walt oh. Disney World um, or Alani or Vero or the Grand Californian and they're no longer able, they can list it. Mm. And you can't make any modifications to these, but if you are local um, or looking for a last minute trip, you may be able to snag something. And I think it'd be a really fun video if we just pick a day and go look and say like the next stay we're booking. Yeah, the first thing we find. Yeah, it, and you can get really great rates doing that because if you have that flexibility, people are trying to get rid of their stays. So they're often listed at a much lower price than you'd expect. Yeah, I'm down.
And don't forget, all DVC rooms qualify for extended hours, which means that at Magic Kingdom and Epcot, you get to stay a little bit later than regular guests after the park closes. Um, and those are on some select dates. Unfortunately for us, while we were staying here, it was not available, but it's a good thing to remember in a massive park. When you're scheduling your trip, look at those because they happen several times a week and you might be able to save enough money booking through DVC rental where maybe you needed two rooms and you could get one since they tend to sleep more people yeah. or you save enough money that you could stay at a deluxe resort for a night or two. That could save you on some genie, save you some hassle and enjoy some late nights in the park. Yeah. But once again, had a great time staying at Animal Kingdom Lodge. We'll certainly be back, but let us know where we should do our next staycation for the series. In the meantime, folks, be sure to like and subscribe if you are new and follow us on all of our socials. It is at Mammoth Club or at Mammoth underscore Club. And if you want to talk with us directly, uh, Max, Molly, and myself are all on our Discord. So feel free to join that as well. You'll find all those links down below. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Alan. And it has been wild. Oh, good You thought switch. I was going to say magical. I did. And then <laughs> plot twist. Yeah. Can we go look at that animal over yeah, there? Yeah, there's something. Everybody's, yeah, everybody's gonna, going over hey, there. It's good to see you.